Good morning, uh, everyone, to our last webinar for the year. So this is um, for those of you joining us the first time. My name is Ryan. I'm the market strategist at IG. So I'll be going through some of the macro events and key things to look out for this week and pretty much um, to the end of the year. And later on, I'll be joined by my colleague, Nabil Mata, premium client manager. He'll be going through some of the charting and price action and what interesting on indices, stocks, and currencies. So I mentioned this is going to be the last um, one for the year. Next year, we're going to shift the timing a bit. Um, we'll have it in the evening at 7 p.m. Mine will be on Monday. Nabil's will be on Tuesday. So this is going to kick off on January 12th. So that's something you might want to take note of and now Bill will repeat this again and mention this um, the details again later. Okay, before we jump into the um, details, what we'll need to go through is this uh, disclaimer. So all this being shared today is just for educational purposes. No specific recommendations to anyone in particular that's not taking into account your individual financial background. All right, and with that out of the way, let's have a quick recap on what happened last week. We talked about energy prices. Oil was going under $60, and it's still going under $60. In fact, um, WTI went under 55 So it's still a very bearish picture on oil pr prices. Even though over the past two or three days, we're seeing some bit of a relief rally but I think uh, realistically, it will be short-lived because there's no real motivation, no real reason for it to really go up yet. So until we see some more concrete signs of uh, economic turnaround or even oil production being cut, then we might see a turnaround in oil prices. And Iraq has been talking about producing more oil next year. So even bigger supply glut possibly. So oil prices likely to go down more over the next uh, few months at least. So with the um, oil prices going down, generally I expect the oil and gas sector to not do too well and that will be um, weighing on indices like the STI, a lot of oil and gas stocks on the Singapore exchange. So any bounce by other stocks is going to be pulled back by oil and gas generally. But and then last week we had the Federal Reserve giving its last um, meeting minutes as well. So a lot of focus on the language of their statement. A lot of um, uh, spotlight on that phrase considerable time. They've added that new phrase um, more patience. So it was a bit of a mixed interpretation. Some Investors um, saw it as more hawkish, and you saw the dollar yen um, going higher. And there was also some commentary on how the economy has been doing better, so improving jobs data helping that. So that also helped the sentiment and helped um, the stocks go up higher. But generally, the market's expecting. Um, interest rate hikes to come in after the uh, first half of the year, so pretty much um, second half of 2015 will be more realistic um, schedule for the interest rate hikes. So when the interest rate hikes do come online, that will be expected to benefit the banks, the financial sectors, so that's something you can look out for. With um, the higher interest rates, banks can um, have more margins. We also talked about the um, China factor. Property prices was one thing I was looking out for. It came in weaker than the previous month. So I think it was um, negative 3% thereabouts. So it's the third straight um, negative um, reading on the index. But the overall index has been sliding from about positive 10% from January the growth moderating until the last three months it went to negative territory so not a very fundamentally um, rosy picture for industrial metals mining stocks oil demand 
So until this China picture turns, turns around, and the first sign will be the property sector, then that will be um, encouraging for the um, global outlook. And we talked about this um, IPO squeeze. Um, the regulators recently approved about 12 IPOs. So generally what happens is people want to bet on that debut IPO, IPO debut jumping up. So they take out money from other stocks to prepare to go into these IPO stocks. So you'll see some pullback on the Chinese markets. That's the theoretical um, pattern. And iron ore prices, we talked about it. Um, Australia is giving some commentary. It's hitting their budget. They, they export a lot of iron and it accounts for about 20% of their income. It's um, pushing five-year lows, still under 70. And the uh, Australian Treasury is um, forecasting around a level of 60. And I think the market's um, forecasting this to rebound in also the second half of 2015. So still a lot of pressure for iron um, prices. And that will be bearish for the mining stocks like Fortescue Metals, BHP Billiton, and other iron um, or related plays. So of course some pressure on the Aussie dollar as well. And this is how Fortescue Metals has been looking. You can see a very nice downward channel. So this is one stock to look out for if you are trying to play the um, bearish iron ore picture. Alright, this week, what's happening? We're seeing oil bouncing. But again, no, no real reason. A lot of it has been um, technically driven. So oversold levels, seeing a lot of people going in to um, support it, and also some short covering. So that's been positive for the oil exporters. Talking about Russia, so rubles have been getting some support. Euro as well, um, tied into Russia. And um, Norwegian kroner. But fundamentally, no change to supply and demand picture. Even Iraq's expected to boost output, so supply might even go up. Economic data has been still soft. China hasn't been releasing any um, convincing turnaround numbers yet. Europe is still sluggish. We'll see some um, European GDP numbers from France later today, and some um, minor data from Italy, like retail sales and whatnot. But these are not going to be very market moving. Um, again, market forecasting oil to rebound in the second half of 2015 once all these um, less competitive oil producers are priced out. Then you have this whole um, cycle resetting again with the oil prices going up with less production. Okay, so what's happening as we hit into 2015? A lot of um, short covering people closing up shop, trying to window dress. So there's a bit of a Christmas rally. You're seeing the S&P 500 pushing new highs. Dow Jones also reaching quite an interesting level, pushing towards 18,000 points. So if it stays on track, we should be able to hit it before the um, year end. And a lot of people are going to the tech sector. That's something getting a lot of interest in the US. So that's something to look out for if you are keen to jump on the trend. And this, um, this, I guess, some of the trend is also interesting in South Korea. Next year, they are proposing to tax companies their corporate cash piles. So, the motivation behind it is they don't. A lot of um, big South Korean companies like Samsung have been sitting on their cash doing nothing with the cash. So the government wants to encourage more companies to spend this cash either by investing in other companies or giving it back to investors through dividends or using it as wages um, to give their workers. So all this is to help stimulate the economy. So there might be some potential taxes on excess cash power. And Samsung this week, um, this month, some reports that are going to raise their dividends by about 30 to 50 percent. So we expect more South Korean companies to pretty much go uh, follow in this um, direction, either raising dividends 
doing share buybacks, increasing their workers' wages, or making more investments. So all this is likely to be positive for the South Korean index. So one of the plays you can look out for on our platform is the um, MSCI Korean ETF. That will take care of some of the big um, cap South Korean shares, or you can also trade Samsung ADR. So quite a possible upside surprise on South Korean shares based on um, this um, tax on excess cash. So the key events uh, we are looking out for today, yesterday we had the um, commentary from Bank of Japan, the monthly economic survey. It's a bit more of an optimistic um, tone. They gave this um, statement that decline in consumption is waning. So in other words, things are not dropping as bad as before. So it's a slightly more optimistic bad picture. So we could expect things to turn around maybe next year, but this is uh, a lot of things are working against Japan right now, and we'll go into that later. Um, we also had some slightly better European consumer confidence numbers last night, a reading of uh, minus 10.9 versus previous reading of minus 11.5. And this morning we had the New Zealand trade numbers. Um, for the past few weeks, we've seen a lot of um, weak data from New Zealand, from the um, current account deficit to manufacturing. All this have been rather soft and putting some pressure on New Zealand's um, Kiwi dollar. So today, export numbers came in relatively flat, 4.02 billion in exports, just slightly under the previous reading of 4.03. Imports 4.24, slightly under 4.94. So consumption is also not there. So still a bit of a sluggish picture. The New Zealand Central Bank, some long-term bias is for Kiwi dollar to go down. They've been saying levels of um, Kiwi dollar still unjustified and unsustainable. So we can expect the Central Bank to try and influence a lower New Zealand dollar at least. And there's some pressure. There was some pressure ahead of this event um, last night. Kiwi dollar was going down, so um, this morning still a bit of a pickup, but largely flat. Overall, in the next few weeks, I think the trend will continue to see some pressure on Kiwi dollar. And we also had the uh, some more indicators on the China leading economic index. So far over the past few weeks, it's been flat at relatively around zero, a reading of 0 0.9. So still no real like optimistic um, turnaround on the um, picture. So it's just quick, taking a quick look at the reading that just came out a few minutes ago. It's at 0 0.9 again. So still flat, no turnaround on um, the outlook yet. Uh, later in the afternoon, we have France, UK, and at night, US. GDP numbers. Uh, France could be a potential sentiment um, mover for the CAC. That's been a bit choppy. No real direction on the index. The one to look out for today will be US um, GDP numbers. That could help dollar yen go up higher. And the one Fed's been always talking about, wage growth. Uh, personal income at 11 p.m. So if this is um, so far over the past few months is around 0.2 percent, 0.3 percent. So if we get that, you know, a um, big jump to around maybe 0.5 and above, that will give a lot of confidence to the markets to expect the rate hikes um, scheduled to be pushed um, earlier. So that will be positive for dollar yen as well. So some possible dollar in action today or tonight. Tomorrow we have some Australian, um, also the survey on outlook, leading indicators, 7 a.m. Long-term Aussie dollars also going down. And then at night, you have the U.S. oil inventories. Uh, if, you've been, if you've been noticing, oil has been reacting to this um, figure over the past few weeks. 
So if oil inventories, uh, let's take a quick look at what the forecast is. If it comes in below the forecast of is expected to dip by 0 0.9 million barrels. So if it goes above, uh, or if it rises, you'll see some um, further pressure on oil inventory or oil prices. If it goes below this forecast, then you can see maybe some um, upside on oil, um, a bit of a relief rally. But realistically, um, I still think fundamentals oil is still quite weak so we can still probably um, see it any any rally to be short-lived and Thursday Christmas Day um, Japan markets are open um, today um, Japan is closed for the Emperor's um, birthday they'll resume tomorrow and they'll be open for Christmas so BOJ meeting minutes out in the morning um, Bank of Japan another press conference that might throw up some surprises, but the expectations overall on Thursday, they're going to give a bit of a um, dervish picture. So expectations for yen to have more weakness towards the end of the week. And finally on Friday, more Japan data, CPI uh, numbers. So that's inflation. Um, Japan has a target for inflation of around 2%. So far, it's... Uh, if you strip out the tax hikes and whatnot, um, it's, uh, it's been showing um, a reading of around 0.9%. So there's still some way to go for them to chase that inflation target, which means more yen weakness. So this will be, uh, the CPI numbers will be an indicator of how much more they have to go. If it comes in weaker, um, the headline reading has been around 2.9%. If it comes in weaker than 29 you can see maybe the yen weakness accelerate and that's pretty much what we have for this week some possible dollar yen action and some maybe perhaps bounce on oil prices tomorrow overall sentiment on stocks a lot of people um, just window dressing so you could see overall markets drift up higher towards the end of the year all right, things that I've been uh, watching out, um, if you've been following me for the previous few webinars, I like looking at the VIX. And we saw this recent spike maybe two weeks ago. 78% spike just in one week alone from around the levels of uh, 14. It reached about 20. And now it's come back down again with, I guess, the market's calmer around 16. So this is something I'll be watching out for, for it to retrace around the 14 to 12 to 14 point level at that point my reading would be that the downside would be quite limited at such a low level but your upside if there's any potential spikes would be quite um, quite attractive and the previous spike that I reached 25 in October that was due to Ebola and some European growth concerns so it doesn't take a lot for, um, I guess, con you know, uh, nervousness or jitters to come back into the market. So this is something you might want to watch out for to um, take advantage of um, the spike in any potential fears coming online next um, over the next few weeks. And what we can look at is on our platform is the VIX futures and the ETFs. Last week we talked about PetroChina. So this is how the picture looks um, on the stock. A nice downward channel. I was talking about the stock price respecting this uh, uptrend line. So where is it today? It's broken through that uptrend line. So that's some signs that maybe it's reached the bottom you can see it's been bouncing off support of about eight dollars and it's also broken through that 20 day moving average this green line so is this a good time to get into petro china if you're optimistic on the um, company's fundamentals one way is to look at it 
um, on a different time frame. Previously, we were looking at daily um, chart. Now it's a four-hour chart. You can try and get it on the pullback towards support. So a few ways to do it. Either you can use support at the 20-day moving average or the uptrend line or using a four-hour chart. Wait for a pullback towards its um, uptrend support here. This um, sub channel up down here. So you're looking at around 8.4 if you're keen to go long. And Petro China is one um, fundamentally um, reason reasonably fundamentally sound stock on the long term. It's um, diversifying to natural gas and is supported by China's um, green push into green reforms. So fundamentally, long term, there's a few drivers for the um, earnings. Okay, and we talked about New Zealand dollar weakness earlier. You can see it's been drifting lower over the past few months, and there's a bit of a cap on resistance on the resistance line here. So that's something you can use as a guide as well to see where the New Zealand dollar might um, go over the next few months. So until we see uh, Kiwi dollar break above this trend line, I don't think it will worry about any um, any um, spikes or jumps above. Um, so it's likely more pressure on this in the foreseeable future with commodity prices and New Zealand data still a bit soft. And here are some of the ideas um, for next year that I'm looking at. So Japan is, one, is my main um, bullish idea. The Bank of Japan has been doing a lot to depreciate the yen. So dollar yens likely fundamentally to be um, under pressure. And that is good news for exporters like Mazda, automakers, Toyota. So that makes any overseas earnings come back even more. So that's going to be a boost for export shares as well as the overall Nikkei and uh, Japan Cash 225. So that's something you can look at. And of course, um, the Japanese pension fund is also, it changes mandate to buy more domestic shares um, from 12% to around 25%. So a lot of um, buying from, from the government side to help support shares. South Korea also positive upside surprise, we could see that dividend tax um, ruling forcing a lot of companies to reconsider buying more of their shares that will push up prices or giving more dividends to um, investors. So we could see more funds buying into South Korean stocks and that will be positive for MSCI Korea or any of the individual stocks like Samsung. Okay, we expect to see more oil or more pressure on oil and industrial metals. So this is probably going to be a bearish picture again for the um, likes of Fortescue Metals, Santos, Oil Search, and any oil and gas related um, stocks like Samcorp Marine or Capo. So no short-term um, positive upside for it yet. And one interesting thing has been Alibaba as well. If you've been following Alibaba's IPO, it was the IPO in September, so a lot of the early investors had a chance to finally sell their shares after a three-month lockup period, and that period was um, this week. So 8.1 million shares were freed from the lockup period. To put this into context, it's about 2.5% of the outstanding shares. Um, on that perspective, it's not supposed to have a big dent, but we still saw some um, sentiment from investors um, dragging down Alibaba stock last night. So it's down by 1.7%. We could still see some more pressure if this um, plays out over the next uh, few days. So this, if you are bullish on Alibaba, could be a window for you to get in on the dips. The one to look out for will be next year. There are two more lockup expiry periods, one in March and the other one in September next year. And you can see it's a significantly larger 
um, size. 421 million shares in March and 1.9 billion shares in September. And this 1.9 includes Yahoo's stake. So we can expect a lot of selling in March and September. So that's something to look out for. If, you want to, if you're holding on to it, you might want to uh, get out of it temporarily. Or if you want to short it, that might be something to um, wait for. All right, uh, at any point, um, before I hand over to Nabil, uh, let me know if you have any questions before I wrap up. So these are the main themes for 2015. Yen weakness, of course, dollar yen is going to be uh, drifting higher over the near term. The STI, I don't think it's going to be. Um, it's still going to be flat because oil and gas stocks are going to be capping any gains. Mm, towards the end of the year, no big market movers. Volume will be low. If there are any surprises, you can see knee jerk reactions, um, significant swings, but there are no risks on the on the radar right now so I don't think we're gonna see um, any big moves yet alright uh, that's all for this week and remember next um, year's webinars will start at 7 p.m. mine will be on Monday it will start on January 12 and Nabil's will start at 7 p.m. on Tuesday. So we are breaking it up into two sections so you can have a, make it to make it more make it easier for you to follow. All right, thanks everyone. I'll pass on to Nabil right now. Hi, good morning everyone. This is uh, Nabil Mata, Premium Client Manager from IG. Um, Merry Christmas to one and all. Nobody feels like working, isn't it? It's all holiday mood. Um, just do a quick sound check. Uh, if you guys can hear me, just do a shout out at the, at the question box. Okay, thanks Sebastian, thanks Lenny. Uh, hi, Mr. Wu. Good to see you. <laughs> Merry Christmas to you as well. Okay, brilliant. Um, at any point of time, because I received some feedback last week that um, the sound is a bit distorted, so at any point of time, please feel free to stop me. Um, if I'm not too engrossed in my charts, I'll, I'll look up for the question box and I'll try to uh, sort it out. Okay, so thank you one and all. Merry Christmas to you too. So let's get the ball rolling before I go ahead let me just cover this disclaimer whatever is presented today is purely for education purposes it does not take into account specific investment objectives financial situation or particular needs of any particular person All right. so moving along now I have a few uh, requests with regards to um, Spotting reversals on the chart. I think it was Dennis, right? Thank you so much for the email. And uh, Dennis' question is, how do we spot reversals for the chart? I think one particular chart that he was looking at is dollar yen. So um, what I'll do later is I will go through the live markets as usual, um, but I will incorporate a bit more price action. Okay. So if you, if you guys have um, attended my webinars for the past few sessions. Uh, price action is a very key thing to me to try to gauge what the market is doing and I'm just trying to see whether the market is consolidating uptrend or downtrend. 
I will move a bit to reversals and I'll start building up the kind of um, knowledge or the kind of uh, education as you move along. But you need to be very clear about swings, about what's the uptrend, what's the downtrend first. Because once I go a bit deeper into reversals, it can get a bit confusing. Um, but what I hope is that through the live markets, through the weekly webinars, or you watch the recordings, you have a bit more understanding of how it works and how I see the markets. Okay, uh, like Ryan mentioned, from next year onwards, we are moving to the evening session, just to capture more people. And I think it'll be a bit more exciting as well with news coming in during our presentations and things like that. Okay, so moving on to live markets. Yeah, Mr. I'll move on to the, uh, I'll talk about the Swiss pass uh, in, a, in a bit, no worries. Okay, so let's take a look at um, what we have. I'll start by indices, followed by Forex, and uh, wrap up, wrap it up with commodities and any other questions that you guys have. So, surprise, surprise. S&P last week bounced up from the level that we spoke about, the 1980 level. Okay, now if you look at the... Um, S&P 500, right, is very, very evident that the weekly chart is in charge, meaning that the weekly chart is what most people are looking at. The weekly chart levels are what uh, is, is, is the respected levels. Because if you, again, this channel has been drawn for you since the beginning, since my first webinar, it has been the same channel since. Nothing much has changed. I'm just going to go through a bit on um, price action to just illustrate to you, you know, where was a potential reversal or whether there was a consolidation or whether the trend continued. Okay, so if you look at the um, weekly chart of the S&P, now I, I might erase something like a broken record here because I repeat this almost every webinar, but when we talk about price action, the uptrend is a series of higher highs and higher lows. So if you look at the beginning of, or say the end of 2012, all right, the first higher high appeared somewhere here, all right, because it broke the previous high. All right, subsequently it formed a higher low here, another higher high here, another higher low here, another higher high, another higher low, another similar high, okay, but the uptrend is still intact, another higher low here, Another higher high here, and a higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high, higher low, higher high. And I mentioned before October, this was a tricky time. It made a lower low. Okay, so a lower low is significant, especially in the context of uptrend, because it can mean either consolidation or a reversal. But what it did was that it simply hit support at 1800 and it bounced straight up. Okay, but when it bounced straight up, now, if you think that this is a downtrend and try to take a shot and get stopped out, you lose money, no big deal, all right? Losing is part of trading, as long as you don't mortgage your house and your family to place that trade, right? But basically, if you took a shot here because you think it's a reversal or consolidation, if, if, if you lose in the trade, no big deal. Take a step back, review the trade, plan again. And when you make a new high over here, I think that was um, last month, when you make a new high, breaking the 2000 level, expect an uptrend. All right, so when I think when last week where we were when the market retraced quite strongly, again the usual suspects will come will come in and say, oh, it's a potential reversal. The sky is going to fall. The world is going to collapse. We might drop 2005. No, okay, because the weekly chart is still intact. The channel is still intact, and I and I highlighted the 1980 level to you guys in terms of support. Still very strong. If 1980 was broken, then it might be a different story today, but it wasn't. It wasn't broken. It was respected. All right. There are multiple support levels at the 1980. You have a channel support. You have the uh, visual support. So you got multiple levels of support. And if you move into a daily chart, you notice what happened was that you look at this daily chart that I drew. This circle I drew last week. It's really not surprising that 1980 is a key level. You got many many resistance here, support here. A lot of battles between the bulls and bears are being fought in the 1980 level. So what happened next was that it hit it and bounced straight up. Now the manner in which it reversed, it is quite I mean it is quite fast. Alright, I admit it's quite hard to take a trade. Depends on how you want to plan and take the trade. The manner in reverse, same thing for October, the manner in reverse upwards is really, really fast. 
but that's how a lot of indices are moving. If you look at the Wall Street, if you look at the um, uh, Nikkei 225, um, you look at the DAX, a lot of them are moving similar fashion. All right, so this is where a bit of experience in the markets comes in, understanding how different markets, different instruments moves, and being able to you know um, be flexible enough um, to 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 take the trade or to or to step aside. But it seems like S and P when it comes when it hits a key level. It just bounced straight up. All right. I mean, of course, like Ryan said, it might be because of window dressing or you know, but technicals are still technicals. 1980 is support, so it's not surprising to me. Okay. Now, whether we can break a new high where we are right now, breaking a new high 2076, it's yet to be seen. Okay. But what I know right now, we are at the key resistance level. It is it is the worst place for you to go long if you've not already been. Uh, you've not you've not already bought bought this uh, bought the S and P, okay? Because it is a resistance. It was previous high. Of course, if we are able to break two o seven five level, then it's another story altogether. Um, right now for S and P, I'm just waiting to see what happens because we're just touching the previous high, okay? So it is an uptrend. It is bullish, but it is at resistance. All right. So if you're not into any long trades, do not chase the market. Now moving on to Wall Street. Wall Street the Dow Jones, yeah. Um same thing, exact same story. So if you look, um, let me go to the weekly chart. Okay, so the weekly chart, quite a similar story to S P, isn't it? Not as nice as the channel, but same thing. I mean so the channel was created all the way in twenty thirteen. High high, high lows, high high, high lows, high high, and what it did was simply a higher low here. You see, so it was a higher high compared to this. This was a high high, and this is a higher low. Okay, I will go in a bit of, uh, I will touch a bit more on reversals later. Yeah, but basically there is no change of trend. Seventeen thousand was a key level. Okay, you can see many resistance touches here, here, and here. Okay, now on hindsight, it's always easy to talk in the markets. In fact, for those of you who are, have been in the markets for more than three to five years or more, you can take my position right now. You can even present. It is really not that difficult to talk on hindsight. All right, but it's what's happening in the live markets and being able to apply your theory or your strategy and manage your psychology and risk. You know, when you take the trade, that is the key. Uh, point on, of differentiating between a good and a bad trader. Okay, so 17,000 was a higher low. Same thing as S&P. Right now we're kissing the uh, previous high near the 18,000 level. All right, couldn't break it yet. We'll see what happens during Christmas. Okay, but just be mindful this week. Um, holiday season is coming in. A lot of traders are not at their desk, so the liquidity might not be there. Okay, but we'll see. We'll see. It's been a really funny year, so I do not want to rule out anything. Okay, I do not want to rule out anything. So just just keep your eyes peeled on the markets or if you want to take a break by all means as well. Okay. Um so same thing, daily chart back to the uptrend. And uh, I can see the pullback. This was the seventeen thousand level that we we're talking about around here. And right now you see the manner of how it bounced. Amazing, isn't it? So back to the uptrend, still bullish, momentum to the upside, but right now we are at resistance. Same analysis for the um Dow Jones. Okay, so that's Dow Jones for you. Let me move on to Nikkei 2 to 5. Okay, Nikkei 2 to 5. Let's look at the weekly chart. Let's see what trend is in, okay? So, see, I drew, I drew all these circles last week exactly. I mean, exactly to the point. So, we are on an uptrend. No two ways about it. Out, higher high, higher low. Definitely uptrend. We broke up from this ascending triangle here. Okay, you see a big higher high. This all these circles I drew last week. Yeah, higher high, higher low. So the higher low was formed around this level here. Now, if you use price action, right? If you use price action, um, and if you want to plan your trade, what happens is when we are on an uptrend, I will always try to take my trades on a higher low. For those of you that attended my workshops or seminars before. I always talk about the same thing. And if it's uptrend, I'm always looking for higher lows to enter the trade. Now the big question is where will the higher low be formed? Alright, that's a big question because a higher low can be here or it can be here 
or it can make even double bottom before going up, right? So on hindsight, it's easy to say, oh, this is a high low because it has gone up from here. But if you're on the live chart, sometimes the big question, you always question yourself, where is the higher low? Here, here, or here? Because as long as this previous low is not breached, it's still on uptrend, isn't it? So that's where you look for clues to stack the odds in your favor. So if you think that, okay, if you think that this is the higher low, I want to look for other reasons that this might be a high low and the trend might continue upwards. So one of the ways that I, you can use and I always mention is support and resistance. And it's not surprising that the Nikkei or the Japan 225 form a higher low where previous resistance turn support levels were at. Around the 16300 level. Okay, which is why I drew this circle here. Okay, because last week this candle was forming here. We do not have this candle yet. I was presenting. And it's still an uptrend. But we can infer that the market, yeah, there was a big red candle, but we can we could have inferred that the market was trying to form a find a higher low. The higher low could be here, it could be here as well. We didn't know. But this was a potential area because it was previous resistance, turn, support. Okay? So what happens is that now is continuing to the upside. And if you look at the daily chart, okay, if you look at the daily chart, okay, same thing, the manner of which in bounce just make a total V shape up. And right now we are close on the previous highs around the um, 18,000 level. Okay, around the 18,000 level. So not much upside left because the resistance is just up ahead. Alright, I'm keen to see what happens next. Alright, uh, because on the daily chart, if this is a lower high, right, then we might form some form of consolidation here. Some form of consolidation pattern here. Nothing can be inferred yet. I can't see anything yet. But just be mindful whether the market can make a push further up or whether it wants to start coming down from here. If it comes down from here, most probably it might form some form of consolidation. Alright, this is a possible scenario. Possible scenario. Okay, so this is the Nikkei. Uh, Japan 2 to 5, sorry. Okay, any, um, let's see, any other indices you want to look out for? You guys are quite quiet today, feel free to shout or... Okay, I'll move on to uh, Hang Seng. Um, Hang Seng, there's really nothing much to analyze. This little... Um, Hang Seng, yeah, it's the best thing, I read your mind. <laughs> okay, this um, Hang Seng weekly chart has been the same since I covered this two or three webinars ago. Nothing much has changed. And my kind of trading, I will avoid such markets. Depends on your cup of tea, of course, uh, but weekly has been consolidating in this, in this symmetrical triangle since like 2014. Alright, you see these circles I draw, these are the key levels you want to look up for. The trend line, it's still supported, key levels about 23,500 level. Alright, if it breaks above, look out for the resistance trend line. If it breaks above this trend line, of course, it might go up back to 25,000 level, possible. Um, but there's really nothing much to infer. It's getting to a apex of this, this triangle, getting to a very narrow spot. So just um, be mindful of which side it will break up from. Okay? Now, if it breaks up to the downside, uh, just take note that the key support is around the 23,000 and the 22,700 level. Okay, I want to see a clean break below these levels before I can safely say that the trend might start to, might, might have reverse to the downside. Okay, but right now just keep this wedge in mind. Alright, there's nothing much to infer on the daily charts because the weekly charts, the weekly charts um, is in charge for the Hang Seng. Okay? So don't be too keen to jump in or up because it's just trading in between that symmetrical triangle. Alright, DEX. Now I mentioned last week that I didn't really like the look of the DEX. Um, same thing this week. When I say I don't really like the look, it means that there's no clear trends at the moment. Um, I think the um, S&P or the um, Dow Jones looks slightly better on the Nikkei as well. Um, what happened to DEX is that so you make a, a series of higher high, higher lows, all right? Higher high, higher lows. Oops, sorry. 
Let me just get my drawing tool instead. Okay. So higher high, higher lows, higher high, higher lows, higher high, higher low, same high, same low. So it was consolidating. And basically again, this was the October move where it made a lower low, followed by a higher high. So the question is this. Now, even though it made a higher high over here, right? It could it still couldn't convincingly break the key ten thousand resistance, which was respected um earlier this year, this level here. Okay, so yes, it was a higher high has been made, a high high compared to this, a high high, and this is a potential higher low. But the ten thousand need to be broken first before I can confirm that the uptrend is intact. Because if ten thousand is not clearly broken, even though it made a higher high and higher low, alright, it might just start consolidating somewhere here again. Okay, so be mindful to plan plan your trade. So quite similar to all the other indices, it might be a start of another new uptrend. It's just that we are be mindful of the key resistance. We are very near the key resistance level of ten thousand. Okay, unless you're looking for intraday trade, if not, it doesn't really make sense to try to hold a swing trade to the upside because you're so close with uh, your resistance level around ten thousand. All right. Um. Okay, China A50. I don't have the SSEC here. Oh, thanks for coming, Miss Tan. Um, hold on, yeah. Do you want the China A50? Okay, let me see whether I have that here. Yeah, give me a moment. Okay, yeah, I don't think we have that. Sorry, Miss Tan. Okay, uh, Sebastian, I tried to look at the US MSCI Korea. Give me a mo moment, yeah? Must be because of what Ryan said just now, right? <laughs> but let me see whether I have it. Uh, okay. Wow. <laughs> Sebastian, you want to take over now? I don't know how to analyze this chart. <laughs> look at that. It seems... Um, this is what I call. I have no idea what this is. <laughs> I'm sorry, uh, Sebastian. I think I need to look at the Bloomberg charts. If you want, I can draw something in the Bloomberg and send it to you. But um, the the uh, feeds that I have on this particular chart package, I don't think the charts is worth any look. But I mean, I can make an inference that it's, it's consolidating simply at this range at the moment. But basically, nothing much to look at. Um, let me look at the weekly chart. Wow, weekly chart is a bit more. Yeah, it's a bit much. But you know what? Just, just ignore this chart. All right, it looks like my nephew's drawing. Uh, um, uh, uh, if you want, I can um, look at the Bloomberg chart for you. All right, let me move on to another one. Sorry about that. Uh, China A50. Yeah, Miss Tan, your favorite China A50, right? Okay, China A50. Now let's take a look at this. Okay, Lenny, you're asking for Samsung, is it? Samsung is in the stock Samsung? Yeah, just now the chart looks very scary, isn't it? <laughs> okay, now, China A50, um, this is the weekly chart. No two ways about it. Very, very bullish daily chart. Okay, now, I mean, every webinar when I cover, I try to help you plan the trade and try to tell you good levels, yeah, because if I just tell you it's bullish or bearish, anybody can do that, all right? But it's the details. I always say trading the devil is in the details. It's very important. Um, so weekly chart is bullish, daily chart is bullish. So definitely to the upside. I think last week it broke a key resistance of 10,000. The next level is at 11,000. Um, and there's really nothing much to infer here. So we need to... Look in the lower time frame. What is the resistance for China A50, Lenny? I don't. I can't see any resistance, even those, even on this high time frame chart. I might need to go on the monthly chart. Okay. And then again, there's not enough data in this charting package. But what we can infer that the China A50 seem to like to respect whole numbers a lot. So if you notice the 9,005 level, 
All right, you can see a bit of support here. You know, the 10,000 level resistance here, based on the candle, um, the way it reacts and close below that level. And right now, 11,000. So, whole numbers are quite key to the China A50. The other level you have to look at is 10.5. So, you see a bit of pattern here. So, even though if you can't see the longer term monthly charts to determine where's the resistance, the 9.5, the 10, the 10.5, the 11, the 11.5, the 12, these are all pretty interesting levels for the China A50. Even if you look at the 8.5 level, you see a bit of hesitation here. You look at the 9,000 level. So, whole numbers are really important. I mean, really, it's, it's very basic kind of analysis, but it is still respected. All right, your analysis need not be too complicated. Okay, the trading, managing your psychology when it comes to trading is tough enough. Keep your analysis, keep your strategy simple. So right now, the weekly chart bullish, daily chart bullish. Let's take a closer look at the four-hour charts. Uh -huh. So four-hour charts. Now, these were little channels that I drew for the last presentation. So this little trend line here was respected. All right, market broke the key 10,000 level. Let me draw the 10,000 level in. Yeah, it was here. Um, and right now, it's continuing upwards. Okay, now this is what you can infer. Give me a moment, yeah, let me just look at the... Okay, there are two things that you can look from this chart. First things first, this is the trend line here. Oops, sorry, sorry about that. Um, let me just draw this again. Okay, first things first, this trend line here, quite important. Okay, and we are looking at the 10.5. 10.5 is quite key to me. You can see the previous support, resistance, then support. So this little trend line plus the horizontal visual support plus the whole number support, this 10.5 is quite key to me. Okay, a longer term um, support is basically here. Okay, let me just zoom out for you. Okay, you see that? You have a better you have a better idea now? So this is a bit more of a longer term support trend line. This is a shorter term trend line. But either way, this whole level here is quite key to me. Around the 10.5, let me just emphasize this area. Okay, because if this level breaks, this trend line breaks, then most probably it's coming back down 10, coming back down to test 10,000. If it's respected, it might just continue to make higher highs and higher highs. Okay, now when it comes to such markets, it is very tempting to chase it, especially the manner of how it's shot up. Okay, but you still need to plan your trade. You still need to plan your trade because one of the most frustrating thing about trading is when your analysis is spot on, the market is moving up, is rallying, is you know the momentum is to the upside, everything say buy, 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 but when you buy the thing drops and you lose money. All right? It's so frustrating. Okay, so you still need to plan a trade, no matter how obvious or how clear the trend is. Very, very uh, important still need to plan a trade. Alright, so look up the 10.5 level as support. Uh, but I'm just I think for China A50, just look up for the whole numbers like I mentioned, the 9.5, the 10, the 10.5s. Draw your support and resistance, those levels are important. And if it's respected, most probably the uptrend will continue. Okay, because I don't see any reason why there should be a reversal, at least there's no sign yet. Okay, so 10.5 level, be mindful of that. Alright? Um, okay, what else do I have? Singapore, blue chip gable, yep. Okay, Singapore, blue chip, let me go on to the weekly chart. Sorry, Gabriel, let me take your question, yeah. Um, I wanted to ask, is today's coming bar is a good sign to get out of any previous long position? I see a bearish long tail. Are you looking at the weekly or daily chart? I assume you are looking at the, I don't know, daily chart? Because the daily chart is not, the candle is not closed yet. Uh, but, okay, daily, thank you. Now, Singapore blue chip looks like the Hang Seng, um, not my cup of tea because it's just really range bound. Interesting thing to note is that it's making a push to the resistance, to break out the resistance. Keep a key eye on the 380 level. Uh, I think this week it tried to push above it, but now, now the candle is below. Um, you'll see how Friday closes, but this circle which I drew I think a couple of weeks back, again looks exactly the Hang Seng, a bit more bullish than the Hang Seng because it's testing a resistance right now. But 
use this symmetrical triangle as your guide, use the 380 as your key resistance, if it breaks the upside, then there's a chance that we might test a previous high of 390, okay? Now, if you were long and you're looking to get out, 380 is the level that you want to look out for. Look in the daily chart. Now, the momentum of the swing is to the upside, even though it's consolidating, okay? Now, this daily candle is not, it's not completed yet. Um, but even though, let's say if it closes like that, like what you mentioned, like a bearish pin candle or a bearish long tail candle, all right, it might, might be a sign that the bulls are a bit tired. It's not surprising because this whole level here, around the 379, 380, it is resistance. Um, but I have to say that the push to the upside is quite strong. Key support you want to look out for is anywhere close to the 375 level. Okay, because if you notice that the touches here, support, 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 resistance, and become support. So this level is quite important to me. Okay, now the question is, I'm not sure where you bought the Singapore blue chip for, whether you bought it from below the bottom of the symmetrical triangle, the middle, um, but it, I would say it depends on your trade plan. What was your risk to reward? What were you targeting? Because... If you're if you're targeting resistance, yeah, then this 380 is a good resistance to get out or to scale out of your profits. Okay, but if you are targeting something longer term, then maybe you might let it wait. You know, it might make a bounce back to support and then it might break above. Okay, so or depends on what risk to reward were you planning and what trade were you planning. All right, but if you were you are in profit, you have hit your one to one target or one to two or wherever you bought the market from. 380 is the logical resistance level to plan your profit targets. Okay, because now that liquidity is dying off Christmas season, I'm not sure whether we can make a break above the 380 level because as we know that 380 level is a quite strong resistance. Okay, um, I mean there are many, many ways to take it. You can close your trade at the profit, but if it breaks to the upside, you can always take the breakout again and you know, write the trend to the upside. Or you can just take everything here. It's really up to you. You bought it at 368.9. Yeah, it's a good level. Let me just go go back to the weekly chart to see where's the 368.9. 368.9. Wow, okay. <laughs> um, I'll call it, looks, looks like more like intra, intraday trade, isn't it? Because it's not on any weekly or key support level. Uh, but yeah, I mean, 368.9 is not very far away. 380 is logical resistance level. All right, to plan your profit targets, basically where we are right now. Okay. All right, so there's Singapore blue chip. Okay, so let me move on. Any other questions on indices? All right, my marketing department says that my webinars are too long, so I need to cut short a bit. <laughs> okay. Um, if you guys watch the recordings, I mean the recordings, most of my recordings are about one hour. I mean, ideally, I'll try to keep it. 30 minutes to 45 minutes, but because I want to go in depth into the top process, the trade planning, and if I cover all different different markets, right, um, it, it, it's not enough time. So moving forward, I might even break the sessions to different markets. Uh, depends on the uh, popularity and the feedback. Okay, because um, I think watching a webinar for one hour, watching a recording for one hour is really really very boring. All right, I watch like at least 500 webinars in my past six, seven years of trading. And really watching webinars can be so boring, especially recordings. Okay, so I try to keep it short and snappy or we break it up, but we'll see, we'll see how it goes. Okay. Um, please ask the marketing to plan more time. <laughs> yeah. It's basically the website, whether they can upload such a big file to it. That's the problem. Um, okay, so that's the indices for you. I'm going to move on to Forex. Let's look at the euro dollar. Okay, now euro dollar. Now last week, this is where I'm going. Uh, okay, last week I did mention. Look at this green candle here. Now last week I did mention that this is a bullish engulfing candle, and that might be a potential that the market might start to retrace higher. Obviously, we all know that I was wrong. Okay, no no harm in being wrong. It's part of trading. Um, and uh, like this is is a lesson that never just trade on the candle, but it is a heads up. Okay, I was emphasizing on bullish engulfing candle or bearish engulfing candles in a weekly chart. Um, many times it worked out, but last week it didn't. 
All right, it just goes to show you how bearish the euro dollar is. It's just been free falling. Okay, so even though it had a bullish engulfing candle last week, from a bearish engulfing candle, so it seems that the bears are in charge again. Okay, so this was this was a heads up, but it didn't turn out from a bearish engulfing candle. So it looks like the bears are coming back to play again. Um, what we can see out now, Dennis, are you around, Dennis? Sorry, Dennis was the one that asked about reversals, and I think it will benefit most of you as well. So, if I'm going to use this to start talking about reversals and um, price action, how to look out for change of trends and things like that. I think I mentioned it briefly last week. Okay, let me just do it again. I'll make it clearer for you, hopefully. So this, so this was a, this is a euro dollar weekly chart. I'm going to use this example to illustrate how a uptrend can change. Okay, so now when we are in an uptrend, making a series of higher highs, higher lows, higher highs, higher lows, the first sign that the trend is tired, is exhausted, or maybe there might be a reversal, the first sign is this. This is what I call a lower high. This is the number one sign, the first sign. Okay, does that mean reversal? Might not be, might just be consolidating into a bullish flag or wedge or whatever. Okay, but a lower high is a first sign that the, the, the uptrend, the bulls are exhausted. Okay, now, second sign is if it makes a lower low. This is a second sign. Second sign to what? Second sign, that means that the uptrend is entering into a different phase. It can either be in a consolidation phase or it can reverse to the downside. I don't know which is which first, but it's a heads up. Okay, so moving back to the live markets, euro dollar. Now let's take a look at the euro dollar and see what happened. Okay, now it was a bit of consolidation in 2013. What happened was that it made a higher high here, followed by a higher low followed by a higher high, so we are in an uptrend here, followed by a higher low, followed by a higher high, oh sorry, same high, but doesn't matter, same high doesn't mean a reversal, followed by a higher low, higher high, higher low, same high, still okay, still okay, and what happened here? This was quite significant, was it? This one here, this swing here. This swing here, what was this? Scenario number two, lower low compared to this low. And it confirmed again by forming a lower high. So it did a lower high, lower low. So I'm quite clear that this was either a reversal or something has something is changing. And of course what we know is that it just dropped. Alright, like a stone. But basically this area here was signs that the trend is changing. You see that? Okay, so that's how you use price section to determine what might happen next. Okay, but it formed a lower high. A low was broke. And then, uh, sorry, lower low. And then it formed a lower high and then continued. You can argue that the S&P did the same thing in October. It formed a lower low, but what happened was that it bounced back up. Okay, but again, nothing is 100% in trading. Okay, if you always think of 100%, you've got to get rid of that mindset. It's all about probabilities. And based on my experience, the number of traders I speak to, price action is one of the highest probability kind of analysis or strategy out there. Okay, because it's a leading indicator. So, lower low, lower high, and it just dropped. Okay, so this is the first example. Um, this is just one of the examples that I wanted to show you based on the charts. Alright, so moving back to the live markets. Let me get rid of all this drawing. Moving back to the live markets, same thing. We are in a downtrend. Okay bearish engulfing candle continuing downwards. Um, okay, so what would be a good level to short? Okay, I have a question. Say so what would be a good level to short? Now, you notice that Euro dollar on the weekly chart, I think I mentioned this couple of business, not many pullbacks because if you look at this, right, when it broke a lower low, the lower high was here. The next lower low was all the way from 134 all the way to like almost like a thousand pips away. Okay, and then it formed a lower high again. Now, when it is in the downtrend, you always look for lower highs to short. 
on a weekly chart, you might not get many opportunities. You need to be very patient. Okay, but this 128 level was a five-star trade. Okay, I call this a five-star trade because it's a very obvious type of trade. Lower low, lower high, short. Okay, so even if you're looking at one time frame and you're just waiting for pullback to short, the 128 level here, which happened in October, November 2014, this was a five-star trade. Okay, and then now we have made a lower low. So the question is, where will be a lower high next? Will it be here? Or would it be back to the near the 128 level? That's where we use other time frames and other tools to plan, to see, to, to give yourself the highest probability type of trade. Okay, but if you are able to incorporate other time frames, all right, you can basically catch many of the pullbacks to short. Let me give you an example. Let's go to daily now. Okay, let me go to the daily chart right now. Now, if you look at the daily chart, all right, there were many, many opportunities for you to short even in October. You see how it pulled back at 128, came down, pulled back again, back to this trend line, around the 126 resistance, came down, didn't make a new low, but pulled back again at 126, made a new low, pull back again to 125 and now resistance and now it made a new low again okay so there are many many lower highs here for you to short but your mindset or your plan is always based on high time frame so you are bearish now what most traders get messed up is when they see something like that here here okay when they see something like that here Immediately, you say, oh, reversal, bye. All right? Because they are not aware of which time frame is in charge. What's the high time frame doing? This is actually just a bearish flag. Okay? Came down, bearish flag, came down again. But for those of you who don't have the high time frame in mind or not sure what you're doing, you see one big bullish candle or buy. And when you buy, the thing drops. It's not surprising because the weekly chart is in charge. The momentum is to the downside. All right? And you notice that every level of resistance when it hit, it drops one to eight, tested a few times, drop, and then became one to six, tested a few times, drop, and then became one to five, tested a few times, drop. All right, so if you're just focusing on shorting the euro dollar for the whole 2014, you'll be a very happy man. Very simple. Okay, again, on hindsight, it sounds really easy, but I'm just stressing this many, many times because it's all about psychology. You need to train your mind to be able to follow the trend, to be know to know what's the, what 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 what's the trend and how to get in and things like that. Okay. Try not to predict reversals. Okay, it's a very common thing to try to predict reversals. Uh, I do it all the time in the past as well. So, for example, I would say, oh, now one two two, it's a bit low, you know. You know, I I don't think Draghi might, you know, want a low euro anymore. Maybe I just try to buy here and see what happens. Very dangerous mindset. Okay, very dangerous mindset. Try to follow the charts. And right now, the euro dollar has made a lower low. I'm only looking for a lower high. So, where are the uh, potential resistance levels okay where the potential resistance levels of course back to the one two three five oh level it'll be an interesting level uh, but this trend line that I drew I think two three webinars ago um, here this trend line be mindful of that okay so let me just delete the circle right now what we want to look at is around these levels here all right, see what happens around here. Again, but just remember the, the holiday season are here, so the market the liquid is might not have enough liquidity for any moves, yeah. But just talking pure price action, this will be a potential low high. Of course, if this resistance level breaks, let's say if you take a shot here, okay. Let's say you 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 think it's bearish, you take a shot here, and the market breaches the resistance and you get stopped out. Really, no big deal. All right, losing is part of trading. Take a step back, reaccess, and say, okay, maybe the market wants to go higher. Then you can plan again. Maybe it wants to hit 125 and drop, or maybe it wants to go to 126. That's where you take out your tools and start planning again. Okay? But don't, if you get stopped out, don't just immediately think the reversal and just buy. Okay? It doesn't work like that. All right? But which time frame the reversal happened, it, it, it's very important as well. Okay? Uh, thanks. Thanks for coming, Sebastian. Merry Christmas to you. I'll, I'll see you soon. Yep, thank you. Um, Sulian, I see your point. Thank you for tips. Yeah, sure. No personal chatter. Yeah, it, it's, yeah. I mean, it's not really personal chatter. It's more of um, 
trusting the charts and, and doing what the, the, the charts are, are, are telling you to do. Okay, try not to predict. I know news is important to know, but try not to predict. Later, when I move on to uh, oil or, or WTI or oil, same thing. My client called me yesterday and said, hey, oil is reversing upwards already. Good time to buy. Yeah, I, was saying, I was thinking, uh, no, it's still very bearish on the charts. So, I mean, I think it, it made a bit of a surge in the lower term time frame. But he might be right, you know, because he might be scalping. For him, it's a reversal. But for me, I'm an intraday to swing trader. It's still very bearish to me. So time frame plays a big part as well. Okay, so moving on, moving on. Again, I got to cover more here. Aussie dollar, show up, Mr. Rama. Um, okay, let's let's take a look at Aussie dollar. All right. Again, before I cover what's going to happen next in the Aussie dollar, I'm going to use this opportunity to talk about the price action reversals again. Okay, now. This is a slightly different example from the euro dollar. Just now I was talking about up when the market was doing uptrend and how it's a potential reversal or consolidation form. Right now I like to illustrate when the market is coming down. Okay, so when the market is coming down, lower high, lower low, lower high, lower low, lower high. This is the first sign that the market might consolidate or reverse to the upside. This is the first sign. And this is a higher low. Okay, now if it does this higher low, higher high, this is the second sign, a higher high. All right, so this is a sign that the downtrend might either consolidate or move up. So, same thing as the euro dollar example, just that on the flip side, the other way around. Okay, so looking at Aussie dollar here, now it has made a very key lower low, slight lower high followed by a lower low, and then it consolidated here. Now I just want you to pay attention. You can call this a slight lower high, not the clearest one. So this might be, you say, okay, this is the first sign that it hits up that it might consolidate or reverse. But what happened is this, no higher high was made. You see this whole resistance around the 89 cents, 88.50, no higher high was made. If it breaks convincingly upwards like that, then maybe, okay, it might be reversal. Okay, but it didn't do that. And once it breaks a new low, breaking the previous low of 86.50, you need to be very clear that the downtrend is still very much intact. And what it did was that it just continued another lower high and lower low. Alright, so the weekly chart just did this for the whole of 2014. Down, consolidate, pull back, down. This was the whole 2014 movement, that's it. Alright, so now looking forward, looking forward, um, this is a daily chart now. Let me just move up to the weekly chart for you. Okay, so the weekly chart is still very much one direction. Alright, still very bearish. Now, the question is where is support? Um, I, I, I mean, I, I discussed with uh, some clients yesterday about where support of Aussie dollar and it's really, really hard to tell. But basically, these lines that I draw around the 80-50 level, this is the most logical area that support might come in because of this previous resistance, resistance, support. So all these little touches here. See, when the market is so bearish, I need to zoom to a much higher time frame to look for support resistance. It just shows how bearish it is, all right? Okay, this is a monthly chart, yeah? I mean, I, I don't really look at the monthly chart, um, but this is how it looks like at the moment, okay? So right now the momentum is still very bearish. I'm looking around the 8050, might pierce through a bit, touch 80 cents even, but this is whole this is the previous resistance might turn to support area. Okay, it does not mean just close your eyes and buy, okay, because the momentum is still very much to the downside, but this is a potential support area. Okay. Going back to the, the other time frames on the weekly chart, very bearish, no two ways about it. Let's go to the daily chart. Okay, daily chart.
Let's see. Again, it's just bearish. There's really nothing much to infer yet. It's still consolidating. Now, if it breaks to the if it breaks the previous low, eighty one, um, eighty one ten, eighty one. OO level, then most probably we might look at the 80 50 level already. But it's still very bearish. I mean, the way it's moving right now is very typical of holiday trading, quite lazy, just slowly aging its way down. Um, looking at the four hour chart, okay, the four hour chart, you can use the channel as a guide. I drew this just before the um, webinar. This little nice four hour channel all the way from last month, okay. And basically, this trend line is a very nice trend line that I like a lot. One touch, two touch, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine touches of this resistance line. Okay, support channel support this year, and what you can do, you can draw a very short term support trend line around here, around the 81, 20 level, somewhere there. Now, if it breaks this level, if it's, if it's a clear break below 81, right, 80, 50 seems very imminent. Okay. So just bear in mind of this little very it's not really it's it's really still looks very bearish. Still looks very bearish. Okay, even if it breaks above this trend line resistance, this whole level here around the eighty one, eighty level is still quite bearish. Okay, but the easier trade is if it breaks down convincingly, just follow the trend, hopefully it comes to eighty fifty. Okay, everything is still quite bearish for Aussie dollar. Alright? What we want to see before, or if you think that there's a reversal, is for it to consolidate, make a higher low or a higher high. Remember the uh, example I showed just now? Alright, so same thing. You want at least the daily chart, if you're a swing trader, you want at least the daily chart to do some form of consolidation. Okay, maybe form a higher low first and then form a higher high. And then hopefully it will do this. Right now, it's not even consolidating yet. It's just coming down. Okay. All right. This is Aussie dollar. Okay. So let me move on to. Okay, I'm going to touch quickly the dollar yen just for those who watch the recording. If I don't talk about the yen, people will kill me because <laughs> uh, yen is so popular right now. Um. Now dollar yen. Okay. Let me just bring your attention to the weekly chart. Very bullish, no two ways about it. Now the way, if for those of you who are trading the yen pairs, right, the the way the yen pairs move is sometimes can be quite exaggerated, and you got always take the big picture, go to high time frames to avoid yourself being sucked in by all the big moves. Uh, because like last week when we were falling, right, all right, um, a lot of people think, oh wow, you know, reversal or things like that, but actually it's not, it's just a retracement. It's just a retracement. If you look at the weekly chart, it's like it's such a it's such a clear trend, you know. If you look at the weekly chart, it simply did this or retracement and then might continue upwards again. Okay? So if you want to if you know if you want to know why one one five got respected, all you need to do is go to your monthly chart and have a look. Okay, now if you look at the monthly chart. And if you draw a line near the 115 level, somewhere here, that's really not, that not surprising why the 115 support was respected. You see the number of touches here, resistance, then support, support, then resistance, and this is what happened next. Okay, so you see a lot of buy orders were waiting at 115, and when it hit, it just shot back up. Yeah, so this is a monthly chart. So if you can't see any support and resistance, don't feel free. I mean, feel free to um, zoom out of the zoom out to a high time frame. So going back to where we are right now, let's look at the daily chart. Okay, now interesting situation on daily chart. So weekly chart is still very bullish. Okay, and for me, dollar yen, the weekly chart, the weekly chart is in charge. Because some of you might say, hey, Nabil, I thought you said this is a lower low. Yeah, it is a lower low. See, this was a low level and what it did last week was a lower low. I expected 117 to be respected and push, but push up but what it did was that it made a lower low. Now uh, based on the uh, chart just now sure we all know that 115 level was a key support level. A lower low was made okay but you got to be always mindful that the heightened time frame is still very bullish. So even though a lower low was made don't expect to just drop like a, from a cliff. 
Okay, so that's where different time frames tell different stories. Now, when a daily made a lower low, but the weekly chart is still bullish, normally I try to stay aside because two different charts are telling two different stories. But when a daily did something like this, nice bullish engulfing candle of a weekly support level of 115, ah, now both time frames are telling the same story. So maybe I want to jump in. All right, but when, when you want to jump in, you should have jumped in last week. I would say late last week. Right now, it's a bit tricky already, I would say. Because where we are right now, dollar yen, this might be a potential lower high. Which I, drew, which I explained in theory just now. And we might be doing something like that. Okay, a bullish flag. Possible. Highly possible. Of course, if it breaks this high and tests the previous high and breaks the previous high around the one two one area, then of course it's a different thing. That means the bulls are still very much intact. But just be mindful. I see this many, many times. The trend is still bullish, but it might want to consolidate into some form of bullish flag, uh, bullish flag chart pattern. I see this many, many times. Okay, flag formations are very popular after a very <coughs> after a very strong bullish or bearish run. Okay, flag formations. Yep. Now, let me move on to my commodities. Okay, any questions on... Oh yeah, Mr. Wu, are you still here? Swissy, right? Sorry, sorry. <laughs> uh, Alright, let me, which, uh, which Swissy pair you want to use, Dollar Swiss, Pound Swiss, or, yeah, sorry for that, I almost forgot about it. Yeah, Swiss, which Swiss pair are you looking for? I, I can, uh, let me, I tell you what, let me just cover one of the Swiss pairs, and then later I'll, I'll give you a call, uh, just to, to give, cover other, other Swiss pairs if you want, but, uh, you can cover one of it now, since you're here. Which, which, uh, Swiss pair do you want to look at now? Dollar Swiss, okay, perfect. Um, okay, as we all know, Swiss is quite weak at the moment after what the central bank did last week. Um, so let's take a look at the weekly chart first. Okay. Now, weekly chart, very bullish. Okay, uh, what I like about it is that it has cleared a key resistance level of under 97 cents. Okay, right now the next level of resistance is around the 99, let's put about 99 cents level. Okay, so let's take a look at this. Still very bullish in the weekly chart, okay? Now daily chart. Okay, daily chart, let me take away this consolidation that I drew. Now, what I can infer from the daily chart is there's a bit of a trend line happening here. There's a resistance somewhere here. Another support here. Okay, I don't see any clear resistance up ahead until 99 cents. What you want to look out for is the 98, which is back to the trend line and the um, resistance turn support, or if not, around the 97 30 level. These are two potential support. I like the way it looks because it's a nice daily candle close above the 98 cents level. Weekly it looks very bullish as well. Um, so yeah, these support levels are quite key levels and look out for, for the uptrend um, to continue. Okay, now this trend line that I drew is quite a nice trend line. You can see that it's support, 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 support. It might turn into support as well. I know this level here broke below it, but it might turn to be valid. So just pay attention anywhere around these levels. Okay, now the question is, would you like to take, if you're bullish, right, would you like to take your longs from the 98 or would you want, or would you want to wait to pull back further to the trend line or perhaps the 97.30 level? Okay, that depends on your risk to reward and which time frame you are taking the trade from. Okay, because if you're taking a swing trade, let's say if you want to plan your trade, let's say if you take the, um, if you want to long here, and you want to target 99 cents, okay, your stop loss is here, waiting it to come down lower will be better because at least it's once to one because this is your reward and this is your risk, about once to one. Okay, but if you're taking for the 98 cents here, 
Okay, let me just take away these drawings. Yeah. Okay, but if you're taking it from the 98 cents, let's say you, you think that this previous resistance might turn support. If you're taking it from here, and your profit target is the strong resistance 99 cents, then you need to ask yourself where's your stop and where's your take profit. Okay, because if your profit target is here, your risk should not be more than this. It doesn't make sense to put a stop here anymore because if not, your risk will be like that. So this is your risk. But this is only a reward. It doesn't really make sense. What you can do is you can zoom into lower time frame, maybe to a four hour chart, um, and try to plan the trade from there. Okay, so the two levels that you're looking for is the 98 cents and the 97.30, which is here. And 97.30 is all the way here, somewhere here. This is where the trend line is as well. Okay, now what I see is that the 98 cents got respected yesterday bullish engulfing candle on a 4 hour but it couldn't break the previous resistance so I'm not too sure whether um, it can be broken or you still want to consolidate but just pay attention on those two levels okay 98.5 is it 98.5 you're talking about the resistance yep this is a previous high but for me the strong resistance is around the 99 cents okay but um, depends on where you want to take trade and stop loss and see where, but what I like is the um, the daily chart based on this trend line. This 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 region right here. Okay, so I, I prefer the, the the lower levels here. Oh, you're waiting to take profit. Awesome. I mean, if you think take profit, then ninety eight fifty. If you think that it's good enough, if not, you can wait for ninety nine cents because uh, I think the the ninety nine cents level here, which was the previous high, I think in twenty twelve, looks very imminent. Okay, I, I like how the weekly candle look performed last week. Nice bullish engulfing. So there's every chance that it might go 99 cents. Parity, is it? Parity, mm, I, it might be. It might go to parity, yeah. Zooming out, it might go to parity. Um, it's just whether there's enough legs for it to push all the way to $1. I'm not too sure. Okay, how you want to, if you're a bit more discretionary, right? If you want to see and try to write the trend, I, of course, you can use trading stops. Or you can use shorter term charts. Let's say if it hits 99 cents now, you can always go to a 15 minute chart. And if you see some form of reversal, you get up. So what I do is that if my target is the previous high of around 98.5, is that if I see a bearish engulfing candle and I see a lower high, something like that, because remember I told you a lower high might be a start of a lower low consolidation, I might get up. But if you want to wait for parity, you are a bit more patient, you can because you might say that, okay, this might be just a consolidation. It's a short-term bullish flag. I think that it might break out from here and continue to the upside. And I want to wait for 99 cents, $1, sure, by all means. So where you plan a profit target, um, it should be roughly, you, have, you should have the rough idea in the beginning when you enter the trade. Okay, so it just depends on where you want to take and, and how you can use lower time frames to, to uh, confirm your, your levels. All right? So that's what you can use. Alright, so I hope that helps. Uh, so sorry if I'm rushing, I'm running a bit late again. Um, let me touch with goal. Okay, so goal. Now, I like how gold looks. I like how gold and silver looks. Remember I was bearish since, since like two months ago. But so the daily chart was against me. Now, let me just go through the weekly chart. What he has done is form a series of lower, low, lower highs. I mentioned this a couple of times before. It broke key level of 1180 for me. And then it pushed up strongly. So this was where I was. I took a step back when it pushed up all the way here again. Okay, now, questions that I even have for my own trading is this. We know that this is a downtrend, right? Lower, low, lower high, lower, low. The question is, is this a lower high or is this a lower high? Now price action when you study swings, right, it can be a bit discretionary and sometimes you just need to take a step back and see what's, what's and, and combine support and resistance to, to paint a better trade plan. Because some of you might say that, okay, this might be a lower high, but this circle here, this is a higher high and price action theory says that higher high might mean a reversal, correct? You're absolutely correct, okay? 
But some of you might think other ways. Some of you might say that, okay, it has made a lower low here, it has made a lower high here, it has made a lower low here, and this is actually a lower high. This one is not a swing. And if this lower high, which means that it might continue downwards, easy, either double bottom or come down. Okay, now whichever way you, you see it, this is a bit tricky, I agree. Whichever, whichever way you, you see it, 1250 is a key resistance level and 1180 is a key support. So I'm looking at the 1250 level and the 1180 level to give me a bit more inference of what might happen. Okay, I prefer it more towards the downside. Which is why I like, um, which is why I like how the what the daily chart did yesterday. Okay, because what it did was that it, um, you see, it came down, it broke a key level of one one eight oh. Now it's below it. So what I want to see is, I do not want it to because I'm bearish, right? I do not want it to consolidate. Okay, because it might be consolidating something like this. So I want a clear break below. 1160 double bottom and then maybe the weekly chart is taking over to the downside okay because if you look at the monthly chart right it is very clear that this key support level of the 1180 is broken okay it's quite clear the candle is below staying below the support so we have a few more days to the month end let's see how this candle closes if this monthly candle closes like that the bears are still in charge. If the monthly candle closes above, convincingly above the 1180120 level, then maybe we might, we might need to reaccess. Okay? So I have a bias for gold. I have a trade plan. You might have a different trade plan. Nothing wrong with that. It's just that you need to know what level. So gold 1250-1180, those are key levels I'm looking out for for gold. Yeah? Now silver, I, I prefer silver actually because silver looks a bit more bearish. So if both metals are going to drop, I think silver will be a, a, a nicer, uh, a more straightforward play because silver, the I think I mentioned this a couple of webinars before, the lower low on the um, swings right is more significant. You notice how it broke, the key level is 1850. Um, you notice how it broke very nicely all the way to 1240 and this for me is a clearer lower high. So what silver might do, right? What silver might do is it might simply form this is lower, sorry. This is lower low, this is lower high, and it might form another lower low. This is what I'm looking out for silver. Okay, but we'll see. Of course this what well, this one for all support must be broken first. And then it should be quite straightforward to downside. The trend might start. Alright, so this is what I'm looking out for gold and silver. Okay, so it's 11.30 right now. You guys got any final questions? I probably can take one more chart before I need to wrap, wrap up the session. Any other questions? Oh, uh, Miss Tan, US market post crude is at a very low level. Uh, could it go to zero? I don't know whether I have that chart. Give me a moment, yeah. UCO. Is it this process crude ETF? Huh. I don't think I have it here, no, Miss Tan. Um, this is the one. Okay. Could it go to zero? Hmm. Okay. Now this is a fresh chart, yeah. It's quite similar to Euro dollar actually. Okay, let's uh, go through this. Now weekly chart very bearish. No two ways about it. Okay, key levels have been broken. Very very bearish. Let me see where's the potential support. I need to zoom out to the monthly chart for that. Okay, let me draw a support in here. Probably around the eight dollars level. Okay, so based on the monthly chart, this $8 level might find some form of support. But weekly chart, very, very bearish. You see when it broke the $25, it just came down, just crashed. Alright, so looking for the $8 level now, weekly is bearish, daily is bearish. Okay, 4 hour is most probably bearish as well. Now, the question is whether it will fall to zero. Um, it's still quite 
a way to go actually. I mean, most probably it might make a bit of a pullback, but all the charts are bearish, so I'm only looking for shorts. Now, the question is where you want to look for shorts. That's where you need to plot your support and resistance. Now, for such markets whereby it moves very fast, right, you can even go to your lower time frames to find resistance levels to take it up, to, uh, to take it down, sorry. So right now, you can see a bit of consolidation around these levels here, around the $11 to $12.50 level. Now, these all levels here are all resistance, potential resistance. Now, what might happen is that if it breaks a support, then we might continue down to the support, it, uh, resist, uh, back to the lower $8. All right, the monthly support is at $8, right? So this is the first level of resistance that you want to look up for. If this level is broken, right, let's say the market moves up and breaks this level, then you want to look for another resistance level, probably around the $13.50 to $14 level. Okay, but for me, every level of resistance is a big wall. Unless something fundamentally changes, is a different thing altogether. But as a technical point of view, very, very bearish. Expect every level of resistance to be respected. So this 12, what's it, this uh, 12, 30 level, you want to look out for it first. See whether there's any reaction to it. If it has, see whether it can break below the previous support of around the 1070 level. Okay, but very bearish at the moment. All right, so if not, uh, let, I need to wrap up this session right now. Again, sorry if I rush. I'll try to break up the seminars, uh, webinars for future. Um, thank you so much for coming. Now, holiday season is the best time for you to review or your past trades in 2014. What kind of trader you are? What have you been doing? All right, because when the market is quiet, when your mind is at peace, it's actually one of my favorite times to go through all my trading journals, look at what mistakes I've done, what good things I did and learn from it. Remember, every trade that you place in the market is a cost of a less for your lesson to learn. Okay, you're paying money to the markets to learn. So whether it's a good trade or bad trade, make sure you learn something from it. And if you've not started your trade trading journal, please, please, please do so. Because imagine the whole of 2014, you start in January with a lot of enthusiasm, with a good capital in your account, and then you come to the end of the year you feel you find that either you're break even or losing money, but there's nothing for you to look back on if there's no trading journal, and you don't know what you did wrong, you don't know what you did right, and it's really really a waste of a whole years of effort and time spent in front of the markets, trying to see whether it's going up, it's going down, it's really really a waste a waste of time. So trading is all about psychology, it's all about trade planning. Trading journal is a very, very important tool. Okay, and when I say trade, trade journal, some of you might, might have Excel spreadsheet, they have some comments or whatever. My kind of trading journal is I do screenshots. Before I enter a trade, I do screenshots. I plan out why I enter the trade, why I, I have stop loss here, things like that. And I just save it in a PowerPoint slides. I do it on a weekly basis so that, you know, at the end of every week, I can review. So this is one way I like I do it, I do it. You can do the same. If you if you prefer your Excel spreadsheets, it's fine as well. But what I'm saying is have something to reflect, have something to look back on because every trade that you place should be a lesson. Because at the end of the day, we all we are all focusing on being a consistent trader. The only way to achieve consistency is to reflect and be honest to yourself. Okay. Trading is a, is a long process. It can be very tiring, but it also can be very rewarding. If you focus on your processes, if you focus on your psychology, if you focus on reflecting on yourself. Okay? Um, would you want to do a session on how to do a good... Info? Yeah, sure, I can, I can do a journal. No, no problem. Thanks, thanks for the idea, Mr. Wu. Uh, Mr. Um, yeah, I mean, there are a lot of webinars that I can do in terms of risk management, trade uh, journaling, uh, strategies. Um, if you guys enjoy it, yeah, just just feedback and I'll, I'll definitely cater time to it. Um, so hopefully 2014 has been a good year for you. Uh, remember to always, always plan the trade and uh, spend some time with your loved ones. Happy holidays to all of you. Merry Christmas, um, happy 2015 and uh, I will catch you soon. Alright, God bless. Take care.